Jojo Siwa. Known for her vibrant and colourful persona, but has recently undergone a shocking transformation, <laughs> adopting a more edgy and mature persona. And I believe this is nothing more than an identity crisis, which led to her losing thousands of fans. Additionally, the controversial and cringe-worthy clips going around online has further damaged her reputation. Now, of course, guys, me and Jerry can't talk about all the cringe things that have happened without filling in some blanks for you. But just put it this way. She used to look like this. Now she looks like this. Holy shit. She is jacked. Oh, wait, sorry. That's that's uh, that's not her. But with that said, ladies and gentlemen, buckle yourselves in. Let's get into it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know who George or Siwa is, she's kind of really popular because of the reality show Dance Moms. She was also on Nickelodeon as well and very popular for releasing music, her own TV shows, her own movies on TV. All kinds of stuff, really. She was just selling entire venues and concerts out at such a young age. But obviously, at the time, Giorgio Siwa was a child herself, appealing to a child audience. The problem is, is Giorgio Siwa was getting older. She started questioning whether she still wanted to appeal to a child audience, or kind of, you know, take it up a notch. Much further than a notch. Total transformation. And just as of a few months ago, that is when the transformation began. In early 2024, she posted a photo on Instagram, but not as the usual bright colored pop star, but dressed all in black with tattoos. And everyone thought, okay, well, this is a change in scenery. This isn't the usual family friendly Georgia we're used to seeing. And that's when she posted another photo on Instagram, mounting another female. Sorry, that doesn't seem very family friendly, does it? And here's another picture she posted, putting a middle finger up to the camera. Whoa! Do you only just find out how to do that or something? Is, is, that, is that new for you? But you know, that's exactly the kind of energy it gives off. Like a kid who's just found out they can swear for the first time. I mean, look how excited she looks. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> and then she uploaded a picture of her armpit to Instagram. I don't know why. And that's when it happened, ladies and gentlemen, the announcement to her new song, Karma. <laughs> But to be honest, I wasn't a big fan of the costume. I mean, she looks like my knee. And then she posted this photo, which, to be honest with you, I didn't realise Darth Maul was the lead singer in this song. How do you manage to get him involved then? But ladies and gentlemen, sitting at home, this is where the cringe begins. The sweet, sweet cringe. The ultimate downfall of... What, what, whatever that is. She posted this on TikTok. Warning, the following content is not made for children and may be disturbing or offensive to some viewers. May contain sexual themes, violence, strong language, traumatic scenarios, and flashing lights. Viewer discretion is advised. Oh, sounds bloody scary, that does. It's, it's terrifying. I don't know if... I don't know if I want to watch this. But it's actually not working well. The transition is not working well. People are just more of just making fun of her and laughing. But on her following TikTok, she posted a trip down memory lane. And uh, that was of her dancing to her song Boomerang from 2016, which was obviously created for the younger fans. And people took this opportunity to express how they felt about the transition. Georgia Siwa used to be my idol, but now I don't even recognize her. Trust me, we all preferred this version of Jojo. People who agree that we need this Jojo back. We need the colorful Jojo back. My daughter just asked me, when can I go and see Giorgio in concert again? Yeah, well, good luck with that, because this is what you're going to be getting. You you're probably better off going to a goth's house and staring at their Christmas tree for an hour. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you've seen the song going on on TikTok. You know, it's karma's a bitch, I should have known better. Before she released the song, she released some sneak peek lyrics on TikTok. These are the first lyrics in the song. I was a bad girl, I did some bad things. But Giorgio, were you really a bad girl that does bad things? Because... As far as I'm aware, you were just covered in sparkles all the time and just acting on children's TV. Or maybe being in the bad girl part was about the time where she farted and cleared out an entire room. And I honestly wonder who her target audience is. Like, I mean, she did say she's trying to create a whole new genre called gay pop, even though that already exists. You know, we'll talk about that a little bit more in a bit, but what the transformation seems like is she went from catering to 11-year-old children to... 15 year old children going through hormonal changes and hates their life and hates their parents. I mean, she's just trying too hard, isn't she? That, that, that's literally it. She's trying too hard. And because she's trying too hard, it's just making her look more like a kid again. But check out what she said in this interview about her uh, transformation. Some of the most respected people in the world have come up to me and been like, what you're doing right now is so right. It is so right. It is what the world needs. Like, I'm lit I'm I'm learning from what you're doing right now and that's crazy to me. I mean I heard that from Lil Nas X yesterday. Exactly what the world needs to is it is it really though? 
Is, is this actually what the world needs? Is is this? So your transformation is gonna put an end to world hunger, yeah? Because that, that's what the world needs. Right, okay. Not to mention, but the individual who told her this was Lil Nas X. You know, the person who released the music video Dancing in Hell and Twerking on Satan. Yeah, it probably seems like the more sanest individual to listen to. But the best part, ladies and gentlemen, is that people on TikTok did some digging and accused Jojo Siwa of stealing the song Karma. And it turns out it's a very possible thing that this could have happened. It could have actually been Miley Cyrus's song, apparently, according to this tweet that somebody found, which started off with Brit Smith. Big thanks to Timberland and Rock Mafia for a great collaboration on hashtag calm as a bitch. Miley Cyrus said, don't forget about me, bitch. But obviously that song was never released. I mean, Miley Cyrus never released a song called Karma. What it actually was is that the writers who wrote Karma was also working with Miley Cyrus as well as working with George Osiwa 12 years later. But there was somebody who actually did release the song and that was the person we just saw in the tweet. Brit Smith. They actually got the approval to release the song. And she released her version of Karma as a bitch a week before George Osiwa's and it almost did better in terms of like how many plays it had on Spotify. But I think on Apple Music or one of the sites it actually did do better than George Osiwa's. I think George Osiwa's didn't even like break the like the, like the top 200. But Brit Smith's version was like in the top 10. And then of course once again she was accused of stealing another song. Because George Osiwa released a preview of possibly one of her upcoming songs and people recognized it. It sounded very, very similar to something they had seen before. So you guys listen to this and you guys let me know in the comment section, what do you think? This next song is called Choose Your Fighter. And it gets better because the version that Jojo Siwa was playing in her preview wasn't even her singing it. She just thought nobody would notice. And ever since this song Karma came out and she's trying to transition into this new bad bitch era, it seems like every interview she's going on, she just seems to be getting more and more cringe at this point. Being guest on my podcast? Oh my gosh. I mean, honestly, let's spice things up. One of my exes. Oh? Dream guest on my podcast? Let's spice things up. Probably one of my exes. <laughs> but it's not just about the cringe in the interviews. It's actually about the things she says as well. People are questioning where did George Osiwa get this huge Among Us ego from? She seems to think that she's like the first person to ever do a transition in their career. No one has made this dramatic of a change yet. No one has made, in my generation, this extreme of a switch. And I am the first in the generation. It is very scary, but... Someone's gotta do it. Hey, we can't. And there are, there are people in my generation who have gone from child star to adult star in music world. Incredibly, super successful careers, but not this 180. And not making it apparent that it's a 180. And so I'm really grateful for that. You're giving me chills over here. You know, I just realized. I now know who the biggest Jojo Siwa fan is. It's Jojo Siwa. <laughs> and you're also not the first in the generation. I mean, did you see Doja Cat? Doja Cat used to be all pink and fluffy too. Then she came on a music video dressed as a demon again. What is it with people and demons, man? What is going on? Oh, do you remember Sam Smith? You know, the really genuine artist? Well, now he's on stage dressed as Satan as well. So I see a common theme here with this satanic stuff. Yeah, so you're not actually the first person to do a huge transition, really, are you? You know, I've transitioned so much and I've actually started swearing now. My favorite swear word is probably motherfucker. Like it really does scream a kid trying to act like an adult. And then a TikToker by the name of Unlucky Pickle actually posted a TikTok where George Siwa just can't stop contradicting herself. And to be honest with you, it's just absolutely hilarious. But why George Siwa can't stop contradicting herself? It's no secret that my transition is heavily inspired by Miley Cyrus. Is there anyone you kind of take your cues from? Because I mean, I, we've seen like Miley Cyrus grew up and we had like Taylor when she did yeah. Reputation, those absolutely. kinds of things. Honestly, I look at some of the generation above them, Michael Jackson, Prince, Elton. Now that contradiction is from two separate interviews, but the contradiction she does within the same interview, the same breath even, she goes on to say she's going to change the game like Elvis, says people like Bowie, Prince, and Elton John were all her inspirations for this, and then immediately doesn't know who Gene Simmons is. I'm getting like a like a sexy glam Gene Simmons sea creature. Ooh. <laughs> going on here. You know, the <laughs> amount of references that people have told me I look like in this video that I have no clue what they are is <laughs> sickening. I'm sorry, there's no way you did that makeup and you don't know who Gene Simmons is. Sorry. <clears throat> I was doing that voice and now I feel like I'm starting to turn into Jojo Siwa. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> and it gets even better where she says in one interview that she said she wants to start a new kind of genre and call it gay pop. 
Like, she said that. She she said she's starting a new genre called gay pop. The genre is, I said it back in the day, when I first signed with Columbia, I said, I want to start a new genre of music. And they said, what do you mean? And I said, well, it's called gay pop. And they were like, what's that? And I was like, it's like K-pop, right? But it's yeah. gay pop. She really did make it seem like she was changing the game with this new genre called gay pop. And then all of a sudden in another interview, she just takes a step back and kind of goes back on her words. And I didn't think that was very boss bitch of her. Want to go back on your statement and say that you're, you weren't the inventor of gay pop? I definitely am not the inventor of gay pop, for sure not. But I do want to be a piece in making it bigger than it already is. Okay. Bring, I want to bring more attention to it. Okay. I'm not the creator. But I'm, I'm not the president, but I might be like the CEO or the like CMO. Sorry, what is going on here? Because it would have probably just been better for you to say, now nah, you know what, I am gonna, I am gonna start a genre called gay pop. What, it already exists? I don't care. I'm starting gay pop now. You know what I mean? That would be pretty badass in my opinion. But she didn't do that. She kind of did a little insecure, <laughs> a little insecure step back on her words and was like, oh, oh, Willa. No, I I just wanna make gay pop more known. You know, I'm definitely not the inventor of gay pop, but I wanna start a new genre called gay pop. It's not very clear on what, what your intention is or what your words are. But yeah, guys, comment down below what you think of Jojo Siwa's transformation. I'm just excited to see what she's gonna do, to be honest. I mean, is she gonna become the final boss of gay pop? Well, who knows, but we're gonna find out. With that said, check out my other videos, ladies and gentlemen. In this video, we talk about Illuminati, who has finally quit YouTube, and in this video, we talk about someone who was pheromone maxing. They never shower.